It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 217 for the end of October 2022. Happy Halloween if you celebrate. I guess we can get into that in a second. Anyway, I'm Steve Wright, one of your co-hosts. Joining me, uh, Spooky Ben Salter. Is yeah, that your well, scary Halloween name? I guess. I didn't know we're doing like a Halloween special Simpsons episode. I didn't come up with a great pun. Uh, Barking Ben Salter? No, that's Banjo. Uh Ben Spooky Salter. Well, anyway, what what would you be? Uh, Slytherin, Steve Wright. I don't know. I don't know. We've done a good job with that. Doesn't matter. We don't really celebrate Halloween. (laughs) Maybe I should have talked about this with you before (laughs) we got on the uh, the air, uh, but we didn't. So we we uh, we actually got like one pack of lollies or candy if you're an American listener last year, and no kids came by. But we don't really live in like we do live on a pretty main street, but like at the end of it. So. Not that many people walk past. But that I don't think a lot of Australians do Halloween. No. Like Canadians yeah, absolutely yeah. did. And it was dumb because it was by the time this because this, I'm seven million years old then, by the time Halloween rolled around in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, it was like already snow on the ground and maybe like minus fifteen. So every Halloween costume you had as a kid was like the Michelin man or like what what they're like fat Batman. So you could fit a Batman suit over like your winter clothes. Um, so it never worked very well, but, um, I definitely trick or treated all the time and got just bucket loads of candy, no razor blades and like toffee apples or anything, just like chocolate bars and stuff like the, the good kind of candy. So good deal. That's like, people are so against it here just on the basis of that's an American thing. Uh, but like you get free, free stuff. Like it sounds like a great deal as a kid, but yeah, we were never allowed to do it because it's like, was a non, non thing. You can't do that. That's not an Australian thing. And I like I was I, I moved when I was twenty, so I, I managed to get into like the the late teens of like just like what's your costume? I don't know, like just sexy slutty Batman instead of having like mm. winter clothes underneath your Batman suit. You just had like a midriff Batman top on, so you could show your belly button. Or like I don't even know why, but you know that's that's where Halloween tends to go for some reason. And yeah, then well, okay, <laughs> okay. So maybe you're maybe you're lucky you didn't have. All of the Halloween. I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Well, that's what we've got. We're, we're Halloween chat. The only other thing worth mentioning that came to mind is uh, Riot Games has acquired Wargaming Sydney. So I They've forgotten... basically put on a, a Riot Sydney costume that they'll wear for the rest of their lives. Ah, oh, that would have been good. We could have had that. Uh, <laughs> we'll just workshop that in post. Um, but yes, I'd forgotten that, that Wargaming Sydney was a thing until this came up. And then I remembered that they're like, one of our bigger, as in Australia's biggest development studios. So kind of interesting that that's happened. And I, hopefully Riot doesn't downsize or anything. Well, interesting and, and and lame, maybe at the same time. Like, it's not like they created World of Warships or World of Tanks or anything. They're just like a support yeah. studio for the most part. And like, that's not well. changing. They're just going to support League of Legends and whatever Riot is, is doing. The weird thing that I still, like, it's weird because it's, like, they're changing to Riot Sydney and the development team is Riot Games, but there's Mm. a publishing side which will stay Wargaming. So it's, like, an almost acquisition. It's, like, a 90% acquisition of the studio or the space or the people. Like, I don't quite, I guess, like, it makes sense when you think about it, but it's just weird being, like, okay, you guys are still Wargaming and you guys are Riot. But I suppose they just they don't want that bit. So fair enough. <laughs> anyway, good luck to them because we have so few developers of that size. I don't even know if we have any that are bigger, really. So uh, hopefully, probably like they... Sledgehammer, maybe in Melbourne. Oh yeah, but I always forget they're there as well. well and like, yeah, anyway, that's kind of the thing about get... the Australian studios. Like we're we're so indie, and we want to be so indie focused. Even like the big studios, they're kind of like the support ones yeah. who don't take a lot of credit and i'm sure they do amazing work but like yeah they don't get a lot of of uh the yeah. limelight for it i guess mm. oh well anyhow we have uh <laughs> we've actually been playing a game this week so that's exciting a game we played together a new release game that's come out you played a bunch more than i have but i've also played a fair bit enough um and that game is gotham Knights. so one you were quite excited for i believe well to the extent that it was a Batman game, uh, yes, yeah. a, a well, Batman and- game, but not as as they like to call it a Batman family game. Which one? It's Bat Family, not Batman Family. Um, yeah, but they two. still put him. 
like the game opens with Batman just to be like, hey, it's, this is, you know, did you guys like Gotham Ark and whatever? It's kind of like this is a Batman family game, but you're playing as these four characters. But but here's like, a 30-minute cutscene with Batman just to get you yeah. in the mood slash bore you to tears eventually because it's a long, long cutscene where you just watch nothing i mean they're, they're, they're basically setting up why this is a batman game you're not playing as batman you're playing as four other characters who you may or may not know from the batman universe some people won't know them because they've only seen like the nolan movie and to uh, be fair the cutscene really doesn't help in that regard then because it just focuses on batman mm-hmm. and then goes oh by the way you're these four guys now and you can like spin the camera around as they talk but like if you don't know who they are it it doesn't really seeing their name and their like secret identity doesn't really help establish that yeah so you're in the you're in the batman universe but you're not batman that's the gist of gotham knights if you weren't aware it sounds similar to arkham knights but it's not made by rocksteady it is made by wb um, montreal who did uh batman arkham origins which was the deathstroke one trying to shorthand a little bit oh uh, yeah that one was still decent but it's the forgotten one if people talk about the arkham games that's the one they forget yes so- asylum city knight is the core rocksteady trilogy and i think arkham origins came out between city and night if i'm recalling correctly and it was like competent but like they didn't try anything really new or or different Mm. um and they're not really trying anything new or different in this one it's like the easiest way to describe it i think is like it's a it's a unnecessarily co-op game that was going to be something completely different and got like clawed back to whatever it's become to the point where there's like all these weird gear systems and level numbers and all this stuff that like floats around you at all times, but is essentially superfluous and doesn't really matter until like the one or two points when it does matter and just becomes frustrating. Um, and yeah. like uses combat that is different from Arkham, but close enough to try to be like reminiscent of Arkham, but doesn't do it in a good way. And then all the problems I was describing before where, like, it's, like, a single-player game at, at its heart that's, like, sort of tuned for co-op. Like, all those problems kind of infect all of the other systems in ways that are mostly annoying. Yeah. Has that has that been your experience thus far? That's how I would describe it as that. And also, it's kind of like they've clearly, since the last Arkham game came out, Spider-Man's been a thing, and it's been a, a massive hit with one and a half games now, another one on the way. And you can kind of see the influence. They've tried to tweak kind of the Batman gameplay from the Arkham games with a bit of the Spider-Man. So how you move around the city, um, well, you show me with Nightwing. You can fly Nimbus Glider around the whole place. I've been mostly playing as Batgirl. uh, And so you kind of just like like hook shot, grapple gun your way around, which is basically like web swinging without the swinging. It's kind of like the grapple just pulls you along. Uh, So it's a little bit slower, but I move, I kind of, because I play so much Spider-Man, that's how I want to move around. Uh, and you kind of climb up the, the buildings in a similar way, just a bit slower. And then the combat's kind of similar to Spider-Man. I would say it's closer to that than the Arkham games because it's less stealth-based. Like, there's a little bit of stealth, but then at some point it just throws you in. It's like, now beat up these 10 guys, just mash and whatever. But it's nowhere near as good as Spider-Man. It's nowhere near as good as the Arkham games. Yeah. Um, it's, it's It reminds me of, like, the mid, mid-series mid Assassin's Creed. Like, the guys wait their turn around you. And you just kind of mash attack. Until they um, don't, though. But sorry, yeah. you finish. Well, so to wrap that up, it's, basically, it's kind of like you saying, can we get Spider-Man or can we get Arkham Knight? And Mum saying, we've got Spider-Man at home. And then <laughs> Spider-Man at home is Gotham Knight. It's, it's just not the same thing. And it's not quite what I wanted. I can see where it's been influenced, but it's very like D-grade attempt at that type of game. Plus co-op for some reason. Yeah, like the, the, the combat has the, the same sort of prompts that like Arkham does. And, like, Arkham heavily influenced Spider-Man, which heavily influenced, I guess, in a way, this game. Um, yeah. But, like, it's annoying because the, it just, at points, you just have goon after goon after goon after you. And when there's, like, ten people to manage, you can't actually manage a crowd like you can in Arkham. Arkham is really good at giving you all the visual stimuli you need at any point without having to spin the camera around like a madman to know when you need to like do the normal counter or a dodge or like the whole dodge and flip over a person. And like, there's, there's things that it throws at you, but you all, you always know, or you might have to refresh yourself at least, but like there's always a immediate counter that you can have 
to to still be in like that free flow combat state and like half the time when i get hit in this game it's because of a cheap shot because someone like launches themselves across like the entirety of gotham city to hit me and i just don't have any way to know what's happening um there are some like counters where it's like d denoted by a red circle or like a red flashing thing because there's kind of two different hit states um where like if you if you don't have a momentum move and your momentum meter built up to use like you you, you just get hit or you just have to dodge and kind of like break all the flow of the combo that you're trying to do not that there's a combo counter but like there is like a combo in a sense of you want to keep delivering hits to to be able to to dispatch people quicker um it's yeah it's like a poor man's everything and something that i didn't want to say but we were playing co-op earlier and, and you you mentioned this game and I i've been talking to david smith from kotaku quite a bit and i can't remember because we've been talking for so long who who mentioned it first but like we got onto the topic of like this just feels like a bad avengers to the point where like it seems like avengers probably scared wb montreal to kind of like claw back some of the stuff but like they didn't mm. remove it from the game entirely so like you mentioned it and like it's it's hard like i'm you know, david gets credit for all this stuff too because i'm not sure who started talking about it first but like it's hard not to think about those connections just be like ooh, like the game that could have been or like just didn't hit any height that it should have it it feels more single player focused than avengers did and i think that's definitely in its favor in that you can just ignore the whole co-op stuff but the way that the characters interact in cutscenes, whether you're playing co-op or whether you're just playing single player, and these, I mean, they only talk to each other in random situations, like in cutscenes, basically when you're back, basically your your hub area, um, and then otherwise it's all over like walkie-talkie essentially, which is a common thing for superhero games. But they just feel a bit removed from you, and so even when we went to play co-op, it kind of felt like we're still just happened to be in the same world, but we're not really playing the same mission, like. To its credit, you can get pretty far apart and you can, like a lot of co-op games don't allow that. Uh, but it also made it challenging because we ended up too far apart and there's like a super obvious thing that if one of us has picked a mission and we're going to follow that mission, um, both of you should better see where to go. And that wasn't the case. We had to like follow the other player to see where to go until it eventually kind of recognizes that's what you want to do. And it then pops up on screen what to do. Yeah. Um, like basic stuff like that, which you would expect in a co-op game, missing. But then on the other hand, at least we could play it. Like we played a mission which you instigated, which I didn't have yet. Like it wasn't in my game to go play. Um, I could play it. I seem to get the recognition that I've completed it. It's now on my case files. And I think I saved having done it and I won't have to do it again, which is great because there's so many, so often we play these co-op games and it's kind of like host does something, support player can't really influence anything. Why am I there? Yeah. Um, but I think conversely, yeah. like it's, it's still all the, the normal traps are there. So like, I think because I was further ahead than you, I could like see that that mission was available to launch. But I feel like if I was behind you and you launched that mission, I would get all like the crafting materials and experience having played with you. But I don't think in my game I would have that mission complete. So it's like that weird thing of like you get some progression, but you don't get a whole bunch of progression. But then if I go and play that mission and I'll have to, to finish it, like all the stuff, like all the chests and things that I could open are already open. So I'm kind of getting penalized in a way for being the not host of the co-op thing, which like I just don't understand why that's the case. Like I should just get to open all the chests all the times and get like, extra incentive to just you know be playing with you because when it comes to the co-op thing like there's there's crafting of of suits and of weapons and stuff but like it's just it throws so many of those things at you like there's no point in crafting or like chasing loot because like you just put on the highest thing you have and you go okay that's good enough and like none of that matters it's all superfluous so like also why are you chasing it in the first place yeah, it's it's hard to real like having played it. I mean, we had enough fun enough. Like it was easier to play through because enemies seem to scale. So you're a much higher level than me. Enemies seem to come down to like maybe two or three levels, or maybe even only one level above my character, and that's who you were fighting as well. So I think your stats were decreased a little bit to make you somewhat level with them, which is okay. Like that's the only way you can do that. Um, but yeah, it kind of comes down to why I play like this. Like the mission structure feels like it's made for one person and they've kind of made a co-op because one they figured out how to do it 
and two because they've got these four characters none of which are batman none of them is really the main character like i suppose people will pick their favorite one and you can play the whole game as them or you can swap and chop and kind of move between them um and it kind of seems like they thought hey we've got four characters let's make this co-op and you can kind of choose who you want to play as but like <laughs> hey we have four characters let's make this a two-player co-op game <laughs> yeah and that's that's also it. why is it only a two-player because four players would make it too easy like it, it was much easier playing with a second person because as far as i could tell the, the number of enemies doesn't seem to have changed there's still too many like but there's too many alone and it takes you forever to get through some zones because it's the main mechanic of this game is sneak in somewhere eventually you'll be seen and you need to bash up all these goons and now there's another wave of goons and now hang on a second there's another wave of goons with and with like, the two mini bosses that take a little bit yeah, longer to kill yeah there's a tank goon there's one with a big shield and there's like some big lady like there's a big one that means they're gonna be harder to kill um and we've seen that many times before it gets tiresome and normally it's kind of a game around that is what lifts it up so like spider-man and the arkham series can be criticized for how they do kind of throw too many enemies at you but it's what happens around that that still makes them a good game and when you are in combat those games feel much tighter than this game does well and, and even like good. even with arkham like it, yes you're playing as batman and there's and like especially like i still think arkham asylum is the best of the three just because it was such a focused narrative experience where like it, it was just so expertly scripted from start to finish and yeah the joker mm. fight at the end was kind of garbage but like Everything was just such a great narrative. Like the arc was amazing. Like that's not happening here because they've they've scripted everything to be from the perspective of one of these four people. So like I'm playing as Nightwing for the most part. I have no idea what Batgirl or Robin or Red Hood are doing 90% of the time. Um, and you can switch back and forth and it's kind of like the game just goes, okay, you have been Robin this entire time if you're playing as Robin. And it's like, yeah. oh, good, good job doing A, B, and C. And it's like, well, I did that as Nightwing. Like, it's not even acknowledging that kind of thing. It's just, it's, it's not a co-op game. It's not a multiplayer game. It's like this weird single player game that's like kind of broad and generic to be able to like tick all of the boxes that it needs to, depending on what you're doing that second. And it just like it, it kind of it's just hollow, um, and like I think it's it's pretty well known that the Court of Owls factors into this in some way, and it's one of Batman's like coolest, newest villains and like organizations, and it's it's watered down and kind of garbage, and if they would have stuck more to the comic storyline that it came from, like revolving around Nightwing primarily, it would be so much better. But you might be playing as Red Hood. So it can't go to that personal, like, complex detail that it could because, like, you just might not be playing as the right person. Um, it, and that's a lot of Gotham Knights for me. Like, it aims for the, it aims for, like, the, the fences. Is that the baseball analogy? They're, they're aiming for, like, touchdowns or, or, or try or i'm just, I'm just for throwing sports that's, things now. that's what i know <laughs> high, high high goals and they're coming nowhere near them and yeah. like they're doing nothing well but they're trying to do eight thousand things and it's just it's frustrating i think is is the easiest way to put it yeah it's it's certainly it's not like it's unplayable at all like it's you can play through this fine it's just very generic it's very kind of c-grade direct-to-video style sequel uh, and it, it kind of feels like that spin-off that was just made because it could be made. Like, they yeah. didn't really need it. It's nowhere near. It's certainly, when it all comes down and there's another Batman, Arkham, whatever game in the future, this game will be forgotten about. It will be written away. Like, be, that was just a, a spin-off. That didn't count. Um, and that's, it kind of seems like they went in with that mindset to begin with. And it was, maybe some of it was trying some stuff they wouldn't try in a, a game that was, you're actually Batman because it's too risky. They're using characters who are lesser known, who... They could try this kind of four-player, you rotate the protagonist type of thing. But you're right. It, it doesn't ever acknowledge that. So it, that would have been its big hook. It would have been the, well, Batgirl did that, and now Nightwing did that, and how does that link together? And you and I did that in reverse order as different characters, and how is our experience different? Super hard to do. Like, that's not easy. But it kind of seems like maybe that was there at some point, and it just got given up on. And the game, oh, man, the gameplay loop is so tedious. Like... They're, like the crafting stuff, like again, is completely unnecessary. But there's like Lucius Fox will sit on the top of a building 
and give you challenges to craft things. And I think there was a stint there where I went through like, because he's like craft a suit and craft a weapon or craft two suits and craft two weapons or craft two melee weapons and craft two weapons. I went through like 10 iterations of different challenge sets because I had enough materials because I didn't bother crafting where I just stood in front of him, did like the the, the four crafting things that I had to, had to do to fill that challenge obligation. And then he just issued me a new set. And it, like, it's like this weird, like destiny mechanic yeah. where like you're supposed Fine. to go and do and this grind, but I could do like, 10 levels of this system just because I didn't care and the rewards are silly um Nightwing has this cool glider that you don't, like I've never used the the bat cycle unless I've been forced to as part of a mission and I hardly ever use like the grapple to get around because like the the glider I can get from the very bottom of Gotham to the very top of Gotham I can cross like oceans and not have to worry about bridges like I don't need anything else play as Nightwing if that's interesting to you because it's just so much easier to traverse around the world. But there was like these weird time trials kind of like the AR challenges in, in Arkham where I'm like, oh, I must I must do these. And I stopped doing them because I realized the only thing I was getting out of accomplishing like a success in the glider challenges was a different paint job for the bat cycle that I never drove because I never needed to because I had the glider like this. All these systems are here trying to make you do busy work, but they're all unnecessary mm. and that's frustrating. So I'd rather have a, a narrative tight focused experience. It kind of makes me worried about what we're going to get from the suicide squad, the, the proper Arkham sequel from Rocksteady, Cause it's sort of in the same kind of vein of like a group of heroes and you can pick the one you want and you can play in co-op and it's like an open world thing. And, like, I think I just want more direction. I don't want this, like, weird playground that they want me to play in for, for months and, and weeks and years that I'll probably, like, get through the main story of and not want to finish. And, sorry, I know I'm rambling, but the point of this whole four-player thing is, oh, like, you've experienced it as Nightwing. Maybe you want to see how Batgirl did. And if the gameplay loop was exciting enough and there was enough variety, maybe I would. But I have no interest because it's boring as hell. That's nothing more to add than that. You've pretty much nailed it. It's it's hard to to keep going after you played too much of the goon mashing simulator of 2022. But it, it's kind of how games like that were in 2012. Like it feels super outdated. I think that's my biggest problem with it. It's very repetitive, yes, and the combat loop is not great. But it just feels clunky the whole time. Yeah. Um, and part of that might be the fact that it is a 30 frames per second game. So that's that was the biggest uproar about this game. Nothing to do with the game itself. It was the fact that it's current gen only, so it's not cross gen. Um, but there's no performance and visual mode. It's 30 frames per second only. Um, we do have to admit, playing it before in co-op, it went down to what I'm going to assume because I could count the frames, maybe two frames a second for about 20 seconds. I thought the console was going to crash. And I don't know if it's because we got too far apart or because we're going too far or because I was on the bat cycle and you were on the glider. But it was, I haven't seen a game do that generation. Um, I haven't seen a game do that since maybe like PS3 days. Like it's, it was, yeah, well, maybe even like N64 days. Like it was chugging. Um, and it eventually caught up and it played again. So when I, when this kind of uproar is happening, I didn't think 30 frames would matter that much for this style of game, but it is, it's probably not about the game itself. It's probably more about, um, this generation, generally speaking. And yeah, like I, I never had that dropout, which was weird. Like I, I saw you kind of doing that, you know, when you're playing a multiplayer game and the connection is not great. Yeah. Like someone on the left, like just teleport to the right kind of thing. You're not losing frames that you're like, you losing the, the frames of like, the opponent yeah. on the screen or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, I don't feel the need to be playing in, in, in co-op anyway. Um, when you're solo, I think it's, it's more stable in 30 frames. And I think it has a visual style that once you kind of get into it, you're, you're pretty much used to what you see. Mm. So I'm like, I'm not too concerned about it being 60 frames or anything like that. And like the, the combat doesn't require finesse. Like, it, you know, like a frame or two isn't going to, change the outcome of of how something works but i get it it matters to some people and they've dropped last gen to try to give you the best experience like that's one of the quotes you know like we it's this is only current gen because we want to give you the best experience well i think you know giving you the reason. option to to you know sacrifice some resolution for 60 frames is pretty standard at this point so i get why people are mad 
Yeah, well, that probably takes us on to more broadly speaking. Do we expect from current gen games to have an option for visual or performance mode? Because I haven't seen too many who haven't had the option. And so essentially, visually is normally 4K uh, and performance is normally 60 frames, sometimes more. So uh, is that a fair expectation that we would think something that's current gen only, there's no cross gen, it would have both options? Like, I guess, I don't know. Like, I don't want to tell a developer how to, well, how to, you know, present their experience. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if we get like a 60 frames patch for this game. And then that, that's not, you know, like the developer's intent or will. It's just like we didn't have time to do it before the game came out kind of thing. So, like, I don't I don't want that to be a pass. But, like, if, if you want it to be 60 frames and, and this, great. If you want to give me the option, great. Like, I, I don't know. Like, all these games... I think they give you the option because it's personal preference and the hardware is not strong enough to do A or B. So they're like, do A or B and pick your pick yeah. your poison. So like, I think I'm more of a frames person, I think, than a resolution person. But also, like, I also don't care playing Gotham Knights. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not answering your question, basically. Oh, what about well, that's you? Fine. Well, so you've answered that part. So I would agree. I'm generally, I normally always pick performance mode. Um, because yeah, I think the frames make all the difference. And normally what it is, is it's normally 60 and it's normally pretty close, if not a locked 60, um, and a dynamic resolution. So maybe you hit 4K sometimes and maybe it goes down to 1440p. I don't really notice that. Um, I think that's a sweet spot. I think sometimes you lose a little bit of visual clarity. So something like Ratchet and Clank, I know people were saying it's better off, you're better off playing in the quality mode because you're getting that like super animated Pixar style 4K and that type of game doesn't really matter as long as it's like a lock 30 is fine and but as you say like a quite often and i think people forget this these modes are added post launch so i think it's common for those two to be there at launch but then like spider-man got its 40 frames i think mode um a bunch of games get like a ray tracing on off mode now that's what i would always cut whenever there's a do you want the ray tracing on for whatever you hit you're going to take for that no I don't think it ever adds anything that's better than what it's taking away. So if it's like you can have ray tracing, but it's only in 1080, or you can have ray tracing, but it's only 30 frames, no. Like ray tracing is the cherry on top, the very last thing that I think is worth it. And it's way too taxing. Like I don't think it's ever really worth it over if it was for free and it, as in it's not taking away anything else, sure. But otherwise, I, I think that's what I always cut. I think the weird thing is a lot of people used to buy a console because you had this thing that could do exactly what it was supposed to. And you didn't have to tweak with it. You didn't have to like have any sort of technical knowledge to do A, B, or C. Mm. And if you did want to play around with resolution and frame rate and this, that, and the other, you got a PC. And now like there's this weird kind of merger or blend where like I, I kind of would just be happy on a console just being like, tell me what the best thing is for this and just do it. Yeah. And if you want to play around with ray tracing and DLSS and da 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 da, go and buy a forty ninety and like cut sick. Get get a four K monitor and see how that works, or get a fourteen forty P and see how many more frames you get on top of that. Like I, I think there's a place for for both styles of people who want to either experiment with that or not. And like, I'm happy if that line wasn't as blurry as it as it currently is. Like it's a console. This is what yeah. it can do. Give me the best options that I can. And, like, that's sort of also taken into account if you connect your Xbox, at least, to, like, your monitor. It knows that it can do 4K or not. So, like, based on that, do the best combination therein. Um, and, well, I think that's why there are so many things or so many competitors to, like, Digital Foundry starting now. A bunch of places are doing that style video, the comparison of how it all runs and what frames you're getting and what the resolution is and all that stuff. Uh, I think if they were ever going to have competition and someone was going to come up on top, it would be someone who was willing to say, play this game like this. Because all of them at the moment, they pretty, and this is what they're trying to do. So, you know, knocking them at all, they do a great job, but they all come out and say, playing it on the quality modes like this, the performance modes like this, playing it on the Series S is like this, and on the PS5 is like this, and you can also have the ray tracing mode. And that's the end of our, that's our conclusion. None of them say, Occasionally they do if it's super obvious, but normally it's kind of close. They all need to be like, all right, the best experience of this is playing on this mode done. And maybe here's one. And I think that's what I'm looking for now. Like, just tell me which one is the best mode. I'm not going to try each one for three hours to see which one I think looks better. Um, just tell me. And it's, I think the answer is always performance mode, but I think occasionally so maybe it's not. Mm. 
Yeah, well, let us know if you uh, pick one or the other regularly and why. But yeah, I think, like, I don't know if I ha- having a 120 frames mode and everything would benefit me. I don't think my eyes are good no. enough to see the difference between 60 and, and 120. We've, and we've had this discussion before, but like, it certainly can yeah. between 30 and 60. So I think 60 is one- my sweet spot. 120 is the clunky one in that often the game gives you the option for the other modes, but like 120 in, um, we guess that, so it can jump up and down. But one 120 in something like COD, there's no option to turn it on or off in the game. You need to go to your Xbox or your PlayStation settings, activate 120 mode there, and then the game will just automatically do it and will not give you an option. Hmm. So I leave my console set to 60, and if I really want to, I change it to 120 because I, I still think it's locked. 60 is better than a fluctuating 120. But that's just me. And often you lose a, quite a lot of resolution going down to 120. So you're kind of in that sweet spot for both in at 60. Um, that's the thing I think both consoles could do better. Just like some, there's obviously a reason that they both do it like that. So like if you could just introduce that, so I could pick like I want to play everything in 60, but maybe this one game I'll do 120. Uh, just like let me do it in the game. Well. You know what else lets you choose between 120 and 60 and 30 frames and like one frame per second now? Because everything needs that option. What is it? Phones. Lots of phones. And we have lots of phones coming across our uh, our desks, either through the good graces of, of corporations or because we've paid other corporations to ship them from the other corporation that sells them. How's that for a segue? <laughs> You've you've been very vague, but but go on. Well, I've uh, I've bought a Samsung Galaxy S twenty two Ultra because my Samsung Z Fold three had the battery power of a, a, a nothing. I was in Italy mm. and I was getting like two three hours use out of my phone, which is not ideal when you're trying to travel and and okay. do anything. Um, so I bought a, a twenty two Ultra. I believe you bought a twenty two. Plus, plus, I only just got that, so I can't give you any facts on it. Although I've just set it up uh, for the same reason. So I've only gone from a from a S twenty one, which I've only had for eighteen months. So this is the quickest I've ever updated a phone. Normally, I go more like two years. Um, but same reason, battery life is terrible. Um, so it was time to upgrade, and that's why I went plus over regular. I don't really care about the extra screen size. I just need that bigger battery. Um, and the the, the twenty one regular and the twenty two plus like. They change the size ever so slightly every year so that the accessories don't fit. I swear that's why. Um, they're <laughs> almost the same size. Last year's regular and this year's plus are like very similar in size. They, I think they must have increased it last year. They've decreased this year. Very close. Um, yeah, so I feel like this is a very small upgrade for me, but better battery. Uh, old phones we're talking about here. You also checked out the iPhone 14, I bought. Yes. Or so an app- Apple sent a 14 plus uh mm. and it's like it's in terms of my i'm not super duper technical but like the screen on the 22 ultra and the screen on the 14 plus are comparable i think the 14 plus probably has a little bit of a better screen and it's that apple proprietary naming terminology it's like the x retina 50 ld liquid cooling i don't know what it's called but um it is really really pretty um and like works with because it's you know it's just a it's a it's iPhone sized thing. It's sometimes they're bigger or smaller depending if you have the plus or not. Like it fits in the backbone, and that works really well with you know like Game Pass streaming. Um, something that I do like about I, I don't fully I don't use the the iPhone ecosystem any longer on a day to day basis. But like Apple Arcade is that cool thing of like mobile games that look good but also are not like micro transaction laden messes so like you know you play that sonic game you play the the star trek game that they have you play oregon trail and you're just like playing a game and you're not worried about do you want to buy the skin for 2.99 or this and then the other so the the phone is good i I think ios 16 is is competent but like i kind of i'm using android now and i'm happy with android i don't want to have to relearn how to use ios but um yeah, they're all they're all phones are too expensive. They do a whole bunch of stuff that I don't think we really need them to do anymore. Oh, now I don't you think you like need 120 man. hertz refresh on your phone, even if you're playing right. video games all the time on them. Just, well, you know what? It probably makes more of a difference on your phone than a game because it just scrolls smoother. Like, yeah, and it also it's just, it's not destroys your battery, but it'll drain your battery a lot like more. That. So I I lock mine to 60, uh, regardless of of. Uh, 
you, yeah. phone platform. You did, you did sound ancient then. Phones these days do too much. Why don't I just call someone? <laughs> uh, but no, but I, I do think that uh, so far, like each upgrade feels way more incremental than it used to. It used to feel like a, a big jump. Maybe not every year. Like Apple used to do the S series, which was like, here's our the things that went wrong last year were fixed, but it's not a big upgrade. And then the next one would be a big upgrade. But it, they all kind of feel like it's a small step. And in some ways, it's a step back each year. Like some things go forward, some features go backwards. Um, and it doesn't, like, if you think about getting a phone in 2011 versus 2014, like there'd be huge differences in that. And it would feel like a massive jump and worthwhile. Now it, it doesn't, like, it feels like a tool that I've bought that I've spent way more money than I ever have on before. Um, actually not that much because if you go to Samsung, you can just ask the chat on their website for a voucher and they'll just give you one. Uh, and so to do that, just say you want to upgrade your phone, they'll give you another hundred bucks off and you can do that like bonus trading credit, whatever. You can actually get a decent price. Not sponsored by Samsung. You can also do that for the Pixel and the iPhone, I think. Does your phone have a stylus like embedded in it? No. Oh, well, the ultra, I really like having a little stylus. Yeah, well, I well, so you've gone the the most powerful one and the biggest one. I thought it looked like I went into a shop. They're not that different in price at the moment. No, I just thought it looked too big. I have big hands. Yeah, I think you have big hands too. I I like a big. Yeah. I like a big chunky phone. So it's the well. I think the plus is compared to looking at it next to my current phone or my previous phone. Like they only look slightly different, but holding it, it does feel bigger. And I felt like going bigger again would be too much. And that's why I didn't get the newly announced Google Pixel Pro seven, something. Seven. Yeah. Um, so that's way cheaper. They're trying to undercut everyone, um, but it just seemed too ginormous. When I was set, holding it in JB Hi-Fi, I thought it's too much. Um, and it got some. It got basically the reviews for that phone. So not a fact based show. We're just. I, this is the gist I got from Twitter. Uh, amazing camera, best camera ever. But I don't actually take that many photos that I keep on my phone. They normally just like screenshots and things I think are funny um <laughs> but like the the process is a bit garbage like it's a, like that's why they can keep the price down like it runs pretty well but they try to cover that with good ai and good software because it's just pure android like your samsung phone has the samsung overlay which makes it chug a little bit and some things are forced through samsung um the whole point of the pixel is basically google has a device which they can just test pure android on um and so they're kind of hoping they can counter that, but then the chip isn't quite as good. So then you weigh all these things up and it's the same as which mode should I play my game on? Which phone should I get? There's no clear answer. It's all like, these are all good and they're all not that good. And maybe you should have just got last year's, but you can't get that anymore. And maybe you should get two years time. It's, it's, it's a strange time getting the phone right now. Like it's, it's never felt more like a tool, which I just need to have because I use it all the time and I do everything on it. I just pay for everything on it now. Like I need a quality phone that's battery is not going to die. Yeah, really expensive, and at the same time, I'm not excited at all to have just got a new phone for like the first time ever. Because it's kind of like oh, I've just got a new thing, which has cost me a bunch of money that I need to have to pay my bills, basically. Well, and I don't really play games on it. Yeah, uh, sure. I I have Samsung Buds two. I think are the the version that I have, and Ooh. they don't fit in my ears. I have weird ears that are too big to for everything. Um, but I like my AirPods. Uh, Apple also gave me a pair of I, uh, AirPod Pro twos to to try out, and they're really really cool. They they have they get, like interchangeable things to fit in your ears properly. So I'm using the medium one. Um, but on iPhone, there's like this little like test, so it like basically checks the seal. You just oh, like yeah. hit play, and it checks the seal in your ears to see if like you need to go up or down a size of like the insert, which is really cool. Um, you can turn on. Uh, noise cancelling just from like the left stick and it it still works on Samsung phones and stuff anything that's connected via Bluetooth and like it's it's a, a different kind of like pass through sound that's not just kind of like using a mic to like just shove it into your ear so it sounds weird it's like cool pass through um, so I use that when I'm running so I don't get hit by a car by accident if I'm not paying enough attention um, and then it has spatial audio which you can't really use when you're using a Samsung device, but like if you're on iPhone and you play a song, it's, it's kind of like, I guess, VR sound mm. and it like follow, it tracks your head. It's weird. Like it's, it's less gimmicky than like VR was on a TV, to be honest. But like, I think you have to be in the right mindset for spatial audio to like properly enjoy it. Like if you want to be fully immersed and you know what's happening, yeah. it's really neat. But like, sometimes you just want to like have something in your ears and not be like, tripped out if you move your head and it's like repositioned where the sound is coming from kind of thing um 
Yeah. So they're neat. Um, it, worth worth the cost? I don't know. Like I I've gone through too many pairs of AirPods because I drop one and like it's gone somewhere. Or the wash. I crush it or whatever. Else. Or like I, I sweated through one. I just like broke it with my ear sweat oh, wow. from running too much during the pandemic, which was kind of gross. So yeah. I still find normal standard AirPods the most comfortable. For me, any of the like the bud ones where you have to change the size, they just or they're meant to be like noise cancelling and give you like a seal in your ear. Not comfortable at all. I've got some razor ones which are okay, but like I can't wear them for long because they just eventually end up uncomfortable. I one hundred percent agree with everything you've just said, except these AirPod Pro two like are the exception to that mentality. But also they're like priced accordingly. So mm-hmm. Would you just be better off getting a pair of AirPods? Really depends. Like as everything does, it depends on you. Like I don't think I'd use them for spatial audio too much. I don't use the noise canceling when I use headphones because I don't want to be like completely cut off from the world. I wouldn't use them on like a plane. Like I just use my Bose ones for noise canceling on a plane um, because like it just has a wire that means I don't have to worry about charging the the things with this that or the other. So yeah, like it's it's kind of like you have to weigh your use cases to what you're looking for and what you want, um, and then I guess compare price tags with what you're looking for. But they're they're solid. They're cool little devices. Um, as is the phone. But yeah, like I think I'm I think I'm in an Android mindset now. So you're an Android boy. Well, yeah. a lot of people do that, and a lot of people will go back as well. So they're both so, in good good places at the moment. Make an Android arcade where I don't have to worry about microtransactions in mobile games. Maybe I'll play more mobile games. There is some like Google Play Store subscription, which I thought, why would anyone ever get this? It's like 10 bucks a month. They tried to sell it to me the other day when I accidentally went in the Google Play Store. Just like, get this thing for $10 a month. No. Like, well, the, the only good thing about Apple Arcade, not the only good thing about Apple Arcade, but like there, it's you, you get a game and like you're not paying any more to play that game. And that, that is, like that's you think about mobile games, you just think about like cash grabs for the most part. Yeah. Let's be honest. So I like used to be I like true, that they but... take that out of it. Yeah. Well, and so more and more we're just getting like things like Game Pass and that type of thing that you're going to play on your phone because you can have the full game experience. But I still find it's too clunky. It takes too long to get like a a backbone or a razor kishi on your phone because you normally need to take the case off for that to sit snug like snug. It's just too much work, Steve. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of the Apple, not Apple, a lot of the um, Game Pass streaming, cloud streaming games, I'll play, and uh, mm. it was because of the Fold, because yeah, I couldn't actually fit a controller on it in any way. I'll play, like, the touch control versions, and, like, for yeah. the most part, you can find a game or two that work really well. Um, the Telltale Walking Dead games are really good, for the most part, until, like, the one or two segments of like an episode where like you really have to be like moving the cursor around and like physically interacting with too many things at once that it's too hard to do with your like thumbs on a little screen. But for the Mm. most part, like generally walking around and hitting a on something works pretty well. But yeah, like that's, if I'm going to play a game, I probably want to use a controller and that means I'll probably not play on a phone to be honest. So yeah, phone game has changed a lot. And I feel like the the ones that go viral is like people who, the old ladies who still play Candy Crush and then you've got <laughs> someone's playing Wordle. Like that's, if I see people on trains playing or a bus playing a game, that's what they're playing. It's one of those two type of things. Uh, yeah, you don't really see people playing like an in-depth mobile game anymore. I saw some guy on his Switch the other day and I thought that's weird. Like you don't normally see people actually like on public transport playing a Switch. It's just, it's too massive. So yeah. People were just like flicking through Instagram. That's all you do these days. Get some games on your phone, people, and, and play that. The Even though I don't do it. Life. The game of social media life. Yeah. Well, mm. on that note, how do we find you on social media, Ben? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ben underscore Salter. Uh, tweeting about how much I've dropped off Gotham Knights, probably. And yourself? Well, yeah, same. Uh, S right AU. Come say hi. Tell me how wrong I am about the uh, Batman game even though I'm completely right and it's not great. Uh, anyway, cool. Yeah, we've See been you. pretty negative. The last two episodes about the the games we've been playing have, have not quite lived up to our expectations. So we're going to be back next week and we're hopefully going to have enjoyed some games we've been playing. I feel like we, we've earned it. There's hope. See you. See you next week. See you then.